Learn how to drift in four steps on a set of courses without any mods on Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, or just improve your drifting skills that you already have with one of these small tricks. I'm Dan's Gaming Van, the only sim racer that lives in a van. If that interests you, hit the subscribe button if this video helps you at all. Click the like button and enjoy. Stay till the end as the advice gets more advanced as the video goes. So even if you can skid, if you stick around, you may still learn something. With that being said, no how-to drift video will make you a great drifter. Seat time and determination combined with proper techniques is how you'll learn, so just be patient. Every time you crash or spin out, you get a little bit better, so you're heading in the right direction. Starting with addressing all of your excuses right off the bat, so then you guys have no reason to complain in the comments as to why you can't drift because your setup isn't good enough, and this is going to include tuning and settings. One, you don't need a handbrake. If you're new, it'll teach you bad habits in the first place. Get a handbrake once you can already drift all the way around an entire track. Two, I and you can do this on every single wheel in the market. PXN, Thrustmaster, Logitech, it doesn't matter. Number three, you don't need a shifter to drift. Paddles will be really hard to go up and down gears while drifting, and as you get more advanced into drifting, I do recommend picking up a shifter. Highly recommend the Moza one, link in the bio. But you only need one or two gears for learning how to drift. When you're first learning how to do donuts, you'll be in first and second, and then when you're learning to hit your first corner, you're going to be in second to third gear and for tuning the biggest excuse in sim racing people think that a tune will just give them all the skills but it doesn't work like that keep it simple leave your force feedback at 80 to 100 percent put your wheel rotation at 900 degrees put your wheel speed all the way up if you can tune that turning down your wheel rotation or your force feedback is simply cheating and it will teach you bad habits for in real life on my thrustmaster tmx and my thrustmaster tx I never tuned a single setting. I just plug in the wheel and spin out over and over until you don't spin out anymore. Your time is better off practicing than it is researching trying to find that magical tune. Now that that's out of the way and you guys have no excuses to complain about in the comments, pull out one of two cars, either the Kunos Drift E30 or the Kunos Drift Supra. I personally like the Supra because it has more power and a longer wheels base, which makes for a little bit easier skids in a way, but E30 is a great car to start with. Because of the low power, it's easier to learn throttle management. It's a little less touchy. Now load into a set of courses Kunos Drift map. This map is great because it's flat. Elevation change and curvature of the road makes a massive difference in how your car slides so eliminating that helps you out a lot. There are four basic techniques that you should know and you will use in every drifting scenario. We'll be covering the biggest and the first two of them in one. Starting off with step one is throttle management and we're going to combine that with counter steer. So to talk about throttle management, with all these tips, it takes a lot of practice to make them work. Throttle management is something that will improve your overall driving, racing included, not just drifting. In simple terms, once you put your car sideways, by giving it one good hit of gas then you begin feathering your gas and that's what we call throttle management feathering is just simply going on and off the gas gently and when i say on and off i don't mean 100 percent throttle zero percent throttle i mean something more like 20 percent throttle to 70 percent throttle and understanding how throttle affects your car is a lot to take in if you're just starting don't overthink it if you spin out you're giving too much gas if you understeer or can't stay sideways then you need more gas You'll be able to start understanding how throttle affects your car if the more you play with it, like being able to speed up and gain grip by using medium range throttle mid drift and being able to slow down mid drift by going full throttle. Now on to counter steer, this is something that you need to combine with throttle control. As Doc said, turn left to go right. I think it's good to play with two levels of this. You'll use both of them while you're drifting. One is counter steering with directing the wheel and holding onto it still. You'll do this when you don't have a lot of angle or when you're just making minor adjustments mid drift. And the big one you need to get comfortable with is letting the car steer itself. This is something that is done by feel and it'll take a lot of practice to understand when to throw and when to catch the wheel. So with using throttle control and counter steering only you should be working on getting some donuts so to enter the donut you're going to give a large amount of gas to brake traction and get your car sideways and simultaneously as you're doing that you're going to let go of the wheel and toss it in the direction that you need to the opposite way that you're spinning right after your car brakes sideways right as you throw your wheel you want to let off the gas to slow the momentum and then start feathering your throttle so go from full throttle to break out sideways to almost no throttle at all and then from there you're just going to feather the gas so after you feel comfortable entering a donut just by punching the throttle and breaking it sideways you're going to start learning how to dump the clutch to enter that donut because that's the proper way to enter almost any drift and it really throws you right into the right angle it's as simple as pushing in your clutch, hitting the gas, and then letting your clutch out really quickly. 
but it's a matter of dumping the clutch and then letting off the gas to kind of regain traction and slow your momentum for a split second before you get back onto the gas to be able to keep yourself from spinning out but still hold the angle. After you feel comfortable doing donuts, make your way to some tight corners. Recommend one of these corners in first or second gear. And just come at the corner nice and controlled. Dump the clutch going around the corner. Throttle a little bit and then get yourself to straighten out after that corner right away. Just try to be as controlled as you can with it. One little drift back to a nice controlled drive away from it. As you get more and more comfortable doing that, just doing one corner drifts around the track and then straightening it out. Then work on gaining a little bit of control, fishtailing out of the drifts. And with that, things can start to feel a little bit whippy. You might start be gaining some more speed on the straights and things start to feel a little bit more out of control the faster you go. And that's where left foot braking comes into play. And this is our last big tip. The best way to start learning left foot braking is just to do a burnout. Rev it up, dump the clutch and get on the brakes. Get to the point of being able to do a brake stand burnout, just completely still, not moving forward at all rev it up, dump the clutch, you might inch forward a little bit when you first get into the burnout, but then be able to get back down to a dead stop. From there, you're gonna start playing with gas to brake ratio, applying more or less gas or more or less brake. I'd say on average, somewhere between 60 to 100% throttle while you're doing the burnout, and somewhere between 10 to 70% brake pressure while you're doing a burnout. Then start working on walking your burnout forward, gaining a little bit of momentum by less brake, then holding the same speed and not accelerating anymore. Work on walking your burnouts around, going a little bit faster and then slowing them down all the while keeping your tires spinning, maybe kicking it out a little bit side to side as you're walking the burnout around. And then start to walk your way into a donut, combining your donut skills now with the left foot braking skills, which should make a donut feel a lot more controlled. Try doing it in first and second gear, maybe a little bit of third gear while you're rolling faster if you're feeling comfortable enough. Left foot braking is applied at all speeds and all gears and all drifting scenarios. If you watch FD or any form of in real life drifting, you'll notice a lot of brake lights flashing on and off while they're drifting and that's left foot braking. And those are my main tips for drifting. If this video has helped you at all, drop a like and hit the subscribe to catch more sim racing gameplay tips and sim racing hardware reviews from Dan's Gaming Van, the only sim racer to live in a van. Comment any questions or even any tips that I missed out on. If you really have a question, you can DM me on Instagram. I'm glad to try to help anybody learn how to drift. At the end of the day, it really comes down to seat time. If you guys are interested in any of the parts on my rig, I have links in the description to all of my setup. And on top of that, there is the Big Cartel website where if you guys want to buy any Dan's Gaming Van merch, which is a lot of which racing and driving inspired merch. If you guys want to support the channel at all, you can go down and check out some stickers and shirts and that good stuff. But that's it. If you guys want to catch the live streams, you can follow us on all the other social medias. We live stream on TikTok and Twitch pretty commonly. And uh, we post on all the other socials as well. So check us out. Dan's Gaming Van. Appreciate you watching. Catch you in the next one.